Welcome to the Basketball Diary. I'm Wu. It's 7.20 a.m. in the morning on Saturday, right? Yes, it is. I'm with a man with two first names. He's <laughs> part of a class of number six in the country on 24-7 sports for Virginia with Kyle Guy, DeAndre Hunter, and Jay Huff. And uh, he went to Iona. He's just graduated. Ty Jerome. What's going on, sir? Nothing. Pleasure to be here. Um, how's everything? Everything's going well. Yeah. Everything's going smoothly. Hey, um, your father ran Riverside. What was that like growing up, being around it? It was awesome because, you know, you have a gym to go shoot I mean, late nights, early mornings, during the day. I mean, as long as there's, there was no team practicing, we could go in the gym and shoot. And it's being around all the, you know, older teams. I and mean, back then, Riverside was better than they were now. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was cool being around you know, those older guys, a bunch who played in college and just getting knowledge from them at such a young age. And I think it really helped my game. What did you learn from your father during that time? Like there's something that on, on the court. I think the, the main things we focused on were how to play the game mm -hmm. and shooting the ball. And I think uh, the knowledge of the game is the biggest thing I learned from him whether it was just watching games together and breaking down games together, or just I think always being around basketball. I mean, I would watch the older teams practice and we'd watch it together and just break a lot of basketball down. How do you approach the game, learning through that, how do you approach the game now uh, when you step onto that court? Um, just lock in, uh, focus, zone everything else out. I mean, basketball, whether I'm working out, it's a practice, it's a game, it's, it's like my sanctuary. Like, nothing else really matters when I'm in between those lines. And it's just, I, I want to focus and do anything I can to help my team win. You have a pretty interesting family background. Uh, not many people know about it. Some do. Uh, what, what, is, what is it that we don't know? <laughs> I don't think many people know that my dad's half black. So that makes you. Yes, it does. It does. <laughs> um, and uh, he grew up in New York. He did. Well, he b born and raised in California, San really? Francisco. Oh, not not raised, born. And then he moved here around six, maybe seven years old. Oh, he's from he's from the Bay. So he's technically from the Bay. Have you been over there? Do you have families over there? I have a few cousins over there. So oh, I've really? been to San Francisco one one time for. We, what was it, what, what was I doing out there? I think my dad was coaching the team out there, so I went with him. Okay. I saw my cousins, it was, it was a fun trip. And I also been to LA for the Nike Basketball Academy, which was real fun. Too. You never considered any school in California? I didn't. Okay. I didn't. <laughs> um, well, stand for a little bit. All right, all right. This season you didn't play. So what happened? I had double hip surgery, okay. seven games into the season. The reason for that being uh, the ball, yeah. didn't fit in the socket correctly in my hip. Yeah. So that caused a torn labrum. And every time you know you turn your leg a separate way or bend down, the, my ball wouldn't, doesn't fit in my socket correctly. So it doesn't allow me to bend or turn my leg a certain way. Uh, in, this, in a situation like this, um, was it bothering you when you had freshman year? Or was it just like the senior year it really started to? I mean, I always have really, really tight hips. OK. Um, I didn't know what the reason was, uh huh. but um, the pain started, I mean, I had off and on pain since sophomore year. I mean, I never, I never thought it would be something like this. I always yeah. thought it was something I could just play through. I thought it was, I had real tight hips. I could stretch and yeah. be good. So I started to stretch more and more often. I felt a little bit better. It would come and go. And senior year, I, it would be to the point where after the games, I have to like physically lift my leg up to get in the car. Like oh, you my, had to like, go. I had to go like this to get in the car after some games, and it was like I had to go to the doctor and. Um, it just I've seen it. I've saw the part. Just let people know, like it's not a big scar tissue, like a giant. Oh no, no, no! It's not a hip replacement. It's just like it's three little incision holes on both sides. So it's yeah. like they're like probably about this big on both sides. Um, tell me about the last few months that you've been going through for your recovery process. What's that like? It was, um, the beginning was real frustrating, uh -huh. um, being on crushes and I mean luckily it went smoothly so it could have even been more frustrating but I think just having the game of basketball taken away from you where that's your, I mean that's what I love to do, you know, where like, like I said earlier that's my sanctuary, that's my place of peace where nothing else really matters and it's like your escape from the world and 
that being taken away from me is it's it's heartbreaking. Like I, I was I was lost for a while, but um, I've just instead of complaining, I put all my energy towards rehab, and it went. It's going really well now. What kind of stuff are you doing these last few months? Well, it started off. I mean, it was a long progression to get here. I mean, three months has felt like ten years. I started. <laughs> we we started. I mean, I would go to physical therapy. I started twice a week. I think when I first got surgery, ride the bike for a little bit. Get on. He, uh, my physical therapist would stretch me out, and then um, I do a few exercises like on on a table and go back home. And that's all I've been doing for. That's all I did for the first maybe two, three weeks and then slowly started to progress and now I'm at the point where I'm doing, I'm just starting to sprint, um, I'm jumping, I'm running, I'm just starting to make basketball movements. I played my first game of one-on-one -on -one the other day. So I'm, I'm With full movements? Good strides. Yeah, full movements. I was wow. about 80, 80, 85%. So okay. I'm getting a lot better. Um, as far as your skills right now, where do you think you are? When you stopped basketball, you were X, right? You felt right. like X. Where do you feel right now? Do you feel like you're 80%, 90%, et cetera, or like you feel like you're beyond X? My shot, I think my shot is definitely beyond X because it's all I've been doing since I've been able to shoot, which is about a month and a half. I mean, yeah. minimum six days a week, usually seven, sometimes eight days a week if we go double sessions, um, just shooting every day. Um, you don't have any game. I don't have any games right now, like no all-star games, anything. I can't play, so it's just straight working out, working out. Um, I definitely am not in game shape right now, of course. Mm -hmm. so that's going to take a while to get back. Um, and then I think my ball handling is going to, it's it's probably 85 or 90% because I can't make moves going full speed right now yet. Well, I'm just starting to, Okay. So, but that that will come back quickly. Uh, what's the timetable to be, obviously everybody's body is different, right. what's the timetable to be 100%? There's no exact date. Yeah. They said hopefully your goal is between four to eight months from surgery. Okay. Um, when I went for my last checkup with my surgeon, he said I was ahead of schedule. So that made our goal between the five and six month mark, Yeah. which would be about another month, two months. Unlike a lot of people, you committed to a school very early, like almost like during the first term of Barack Obama. <laughs> um, so what made you pick Virginia and why so early? Um, I went down there and I fell in love with the school, so I figured why wait? Um, the, the family atmosphere is unbelievable between the players and the coaching staff and just everyone and the campus is beautiful. So they have a, they're building a winning tradition. It's just somewhere I, I could see my, I really saw myself when I went down to visit, and I just figured, why wait? You know, what I mean, a lot of times people wait. They want attention. They want to draw out the recruiting process, and you know, that, that's not that's not me. I mean, I and it was also it was a it, uh, it was huge, you know, to be the first part of what's now a really good recruiting class. Yeah. Uh, what what was the other final school that was there? that school that had a shot, but I was like, eh, I'm gonna go to Virginia. There wasn't because I committed so early. So I never really narrowed it down to like three, five. I never narrowed it down. It was okay. just, um, I took a few visits. Um, I, liked, I liked other schools, you know, I had a yeah. great relationship with some other coaches, like some coaches at Temple, coaches at GW. I had really good relationships with them. Uh, Coach McKellar from Davidson, I really liked him a lot. Um, and some other schools intrigued me, but I really didn't draw the recruiting process at all. You know, once I went down to Virginia, and I saw um, how beautiful the campus was, and and I think the biggest piece for me, well, the the strength coach is also phenomenal, which is a big was was a big piece for me too, because that's something I really needed to improve, of mm -hmm. course. And um, I think the really biggest piece for me that sold me was just how much of a family and how great the team chemistry is. Yeah, that's somewhere I want to be. You know what I mean? Where you really make, I mean, your teammates on the court, your brothers off the court, and it's just it, it's a great environment. Uh, who are the guys from UVA right now that you've seen and talked to a lot? And uh, Anthony Gill's in New York right now, mm -hmm. as you know, preparing for the draft with uh, Ross Burns and Pro Hoop. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I see him once in a while and talk to him. Um, Joe Harris, um, I, hit, I went to lunch with him and Ross Burns a while, a while back, and 
I talk to him every once in a while. Every once in a while, I speak to Malcolm. Just some guys there, and they're all just good people. What do they? What, what kind of advice or tips that they give you? Going? Really, just be myself. Be confident, um, and just make sure you put the team first. Just have a great attitude. Uh, now, for the fans in Virginia, uh, what kind of college player are they expecting to see in Ty Jerome? <laughs> uh, smart player. Anything to do to help the team win. Mm -hmm. Just uh, I'll knock down shots, make the right play, and just have fun on the court. Is there a player that you mold from college and NBA that you kind of watch a lot and you try to copy a little bit of their game? I watch Stephen Curry a lot, uh -huh. but you can't, you can't really mold your game after him. Yeah. I mean, he's taking like pull up from half court which is you have to get to a certain level, take that shot before you're getting subbed out. You know, if my yeah. dad's coaching me, that's all good, but um, I would love to take that shot, but you know, sometimes you can't. So, but I, I try to watch the other things he does, you know, how he moves without the ball so well. Mm -hmm. He's always pushing the ball in transition, and he's in great shape, so he never stops. Yeah. And just stuff like that, how he's so active on defense, you know, he, get, he gets a lot of steals, he leads the league in steals, and just stuff like that. He's, he's a really underrated defensive player, too. So, all right, you watch those, but if you could be anybody, who would it be? Would it be him? Oh, if I could be anybody in the NBA. Yeah. I can't just be myself in the NBA. You could be yourself, but this is like an interview question. So, you know, you got to, it's hypothetical. Uh, yeah, probably him. I mean, I'm a huge Kobe Bryant fan too. But he's an asshole, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Steph Curry has made it like, so he has great relationships on the court. It seems like yeah. I don't know him personally, and it seems like he has a great relationship off the court. And you know, if you could have that, who? who why okay. Not? All right. So, who do you think the Cavs gonna play? We're shooting this Saturday morning, so. Game six is tonight in Oklahoma City. That's right. So. Who you got tonight, first off? That's the question. I have Golden State. You have Golden State. Have Golden okay, State. I have OKC. I, have I, think, they're, I think they're going fishing. <laughs> um, so you have Golden State. And you have Golden State facing? Cleveland. Cleveland. All right. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, I could see OKC winning tonight, but this is their last chance. Okay. Because they're not winning game seven in, in Oracle. Man, I, I don't know, man. I just There's think no I, I think they they just had the body language of like relentless attack, and I they was do. Just, uh, and I they think do. they're gonna win tonight. I could see I could see them winning tonight. I could. Um, you go to UVA. Are you flying out or are you driving? I'm driving down. All right, you driving. That's quite a few hours. What kind of music are you gonna be playing? <laughs> It's gonna be a variety of music. What kind of mu what, 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 music? What's the spectrum? What's the rainbow? You know. All right, it'll go. I mean, I got my pop songs from oh. like, you know, the song "The Wild Things." Okay. I can play that song a lot on repeat, actually. Uh -huh. um, all the way to Future and Meek Mill, and, and I got a lot of big variety. Okay. Chain Smokers, uh, Train. Okay. It's a lot. It's a, it's a huge variety. Do you have any foreign music? No, not really. Just American. Yeah, pretty much. All right. Uh, what class are you taking? I'm taking one class this summer, gender, sports, and film. Gender, sports, and film. That's pretty good. Yeah, hopefully. Sounds exciting. Yeah. Um, now, you might have some kind of surprise stuff happening at Virginia at the end of the summer, right? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Hopefully. We'll see. Um, is there anything you like to do outside of basketball? Nothing interesting, honestly. I mean, hang out, with, hang out with my friends, hang out, mm -hmm. with, just relax, honestly. Spend family time. That's it. I mean, basketball takes up so much time, so much time, and just it, it's it's really it drains your body. You know, some some days where you'll go wake up early, yeah, really early, like this morning. Yeah. Uh, go work out, <laughs> lift after. I mean, yeah. The, now I'm going through the rehab process, so it really takes about four or five hours every single day. So right. it's just like the time where you're where you're not playing basketball or not lifting, you kind of just want to relax. I mean, spend downtime. Half time, I'm, I'm icing my hips right now anyway, so. Do you have any TV shows you like to watch? No, nah, I don't. 
Really? Not right now. NBA playoffs are on. Okay. So not right now. Okay. Um, I... Actually, One Tree Hill was a great show. What show? One Tree Hill. One Tree Hill. Netflix. It's Netflix. Okay. One Tree Hill. One Tree Hill. One Tree Hill. <laughs> um, any advice for guys who are younger playing basketball trying to get recruited? Really quick pitch. For guys who are freshmen, sophomores. I'll say just not worry about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you go to live period tournaments or you see coaches, I mean, don't change the way you play. You know what I mean? If you want to, if that's, you want to get recruited, that's someone you're going to play for for the next four years, however many years you're in college. So yeah. you can't change your game when they come or don't get excited. I mean, just zone in and the right school, the right coach, if you're good enough, will find you. Ty Jerome. Ty, thank you. Thank you. And the Korean guy that <laughs> passed us. <laughs> Started. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you.